working to connect a region of over 600 mill bridges between our lands. Hello and welcome to ASEAN in Focus. We're coming to you live from Manila in Thailand. Hello, Esther. Hi, Alma. Good afternoon. And to all our viewers, I'm Esther Odanga from EBC Thailand Bureau, bringing you the news in the dynamic ASEAN region. On today's headlines. The government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is expected to pay 4.6 billion pesos in unpaid salaries to 9,000 overseas Filipino workers who were forced to return home after they stopped receiving remuneration. Department of National Defense or DND Secretary Delphine Lorenzana on Monday lauded the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP for two successful operations in Bukidnon and Baguindanao that resulted in the deaths of ranking leaders of the New People's Army or NPA and Dawla Islamiya. Anti-protesters rallied in Bangkok's commercial district, calling for an end to the country's strict Lady Majeste law after a string of uh, student protest leaders have been charged under the law following the peak of their monarchy reform movement last year. And an aid to humanity held in Bangkok, Thailand. First, the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is expected to pay 4.6 billion pesos in unpaid salaries to 9,000 overseas Filipino workers or OFWs who were forced to return home after they stopped receiving remuneration. Take a look. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio III is optimistic the payment will be made when the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia counterpart Ahmed Al-Raji visits the country in December this year. Bello was in Saudi Arabia last week to attend the sixth ministerial consultation of the Abu Dhabi Dialogue, or ADD, a forum for talks and cooperation between Asian countries of labor origin and destination held October 25 to the 29th. The dialogue sought to enable safe, orderly, and regular migration in some of the world's largest temporary labor migration corridors. Bello was invited by Al Raji to a private meeting October 26 at Habdur Palace, Dubai, where the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia Labor Minister appealed for the lifting of the suspension on Arab recruitment agencies which deployed the OFWs whose salaries and benefits remained unpaid. Bello said the ban would be lifted once the salaries are settled. The unpaid OFWs who were repatriated in 2016 won their cases against KSA with the help of state lawyers. However, the salaries are still unpaid to date. The Abu Dhabi Dialogue, or ADD or AD, established in 2008, consists of the 11 member states of labor consultation Colombo process, namely Afghanistan, Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, Nepal, Pakistan, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Vietnam, six Gulf countries of destination, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates and Malaysia. Emmanuel Macron on Saturday saw to be baptized with India and Indonesia. France's presidency said after Paris was locked out of a defense pact between the U.S., U.K., and Australia. Since losing a major submarine deal with Canberra, which joined an AUKUS alliance to better counter China, France has sought solace in the leading Asian nations for deeper strategic ties in the Pacific region. On the sidelines of G20 summit in Rome, President Macron first met his Indonesian counterpart, Joko Widodo, followed by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi focusing on the growth economic clout of the region and the rivalry between the United States and China. 
France considers itself a power in the Pacific, thanks to overseas possession such as New Caledonia and French Polynesia, and is pursuing ambitions to build greater influence on the region, particularly through Southeast Asia. The Francis Elise Paulus said, Macron and Vidodo spoke for half an hour and decided to work on a true strategic partnership in the Indo-Pacific. The French presidency added that it would notably cover the question of the ecological transition of support for employment and growth in Indonesia and the post-COVID revival. Vidodo he and his French counterpart also reviewed coordination at ASEAN, Southeast Asia's regional bloc where Indonesia, with a population of more than 270 million, plays a pivotal role. France assumes the rotating EU presidency in 2022. Companies listed in Malaysia will be required to have at least one female director on their board starting next year. That, according to the government on Friday, a rare policy for an Asian country. About 250 companies, around a quarter of those that listed on the Malaysian Stock Exchange, still don't have women on their boards, according to Finance Minister Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz. The new policy was aimed at recognizing the role of women in the decision-making process and strengthening leadership as well as uh, effectiveness of boards, according to he told Parliament as he unveiled the next year's budget. He said the contribution of women in the economy has never been denied but needs to be strengthened. It will take effect in September for large companies and in June 2023 for others that are listed. Gender quotas on corporate boards have become common in the West and countries, including Norway, Spain, and Italy, introduced laws aimed at boosting female representation. But they are still rare in Asia. India is another country in the region that has introduced a quota requiring at least one female director on the board of listed firms. Church leaders in Indonesia's conflict wracked Papua region called for a calm Sunday as thousands fled to shelters after a two year old boy was killed in a firefight between government troops and independent speaking rebels. The restive region at the easternmost edge of Southeast Asian archipelago has been the scene of intermittent clashes for decades in one of the world's longest running insurgencies. This week, a two-year-old boy was killed in an exchange of gunfire, while a six-year-old was hospitalized for bullet wounds sustained in the midst of firefight in Intan Jaya district, according to authorities, who said the rebels later tried to take control of the local airport. Police earlier blamed the guerrillas for deadly shooting, but AFP could not independently verify responsibility for the killing. Conflicting accounts are common in Papua, where Indonesian security forces have long been dogged by allegations of gross rights abuses against civilians. Papua police spokesman Faisal Ramadani acknowledged the killing and that thousands have fled the area, but added the military were in control of vital public facilities. Rebel spokesman Sebi Sambon said this week's firefight was legitimate battle in the war for independence. He said the war for the liberation of Papua nation will not stop until Papua is free. A former Dutch colony mineral rich, Papua declared itself independent in 1961, but neighboring Indonesia took control two years later, promising an independence referendum. The, the subsequent UN-backed vote in favor of staying part of Indonesia was widely considered a sham and set off years of conflict. And staying in the Indonesian province of uh, Papua New Guinea, hospitals there are overwhelmed with COVID-19 patients. But authorities they, uh, there say they prefer fast vaccination rather than a hard lockdown. Take a look. In a press conference held in Taurama Aquatic Center, which is also one of the quarantine facilities in Port Moresby, National Capital District Governor Honorable Poe Sparkop, along with the senior officials in medical field, spoke to the media about the present situation of the city. 
The Port Moresby General Hospital and the St. John's Ambulance are both suffering a crisis point that will break down any time unless they receive support in terms of resources, manpower, medical workers and staff, medical supplies, hospital equipment, oxygen and modern facilities. I want to thank each and every one of them and their family from the bottom of my heart for their, all that they are doing to support our people and keep us healthy and importantly overcome this challenge. But the sad reality now is that the health system and all the effort is tittering on collapse. You all have had it already. They are pressed by manpower, not enough manpower. They are pressed by bed space, all the isolation ward, all the different wards in the Port General Hospital, Hospital are already overwhelmed. Port Moresby General Hospital CEO Dr. Paki Molomi reported the alarming large number of deaths which occurred in just a week. Governor Poes Barkop will not impose lockdown as of this report, though social, public and big crowd gatherings are still banned. It's a serious discussion now, but we have not made a decision yet. I have to, I'm waiting for the Secretary for Health. I've spoken to some doctors already, our three CEOs from the hospital and uh, Tarama Aquatic Center and PHA, they still have not given me their views. If they all say we do it, then we might, we might have to do it, but um, I hope we don't have to do it because it doesn't work in the past. It doesn't really break, break in the transmission. So if you're going to do a lockdown, it, it has to be very precise. He also pleaded to the public to be vaccinated in order to break the circle of transmission of COVID-19 and Delta variant. It's about be, being responsible and doing the right thing. And the right thing is to get our people to adhere to the protocols. But more importantly, to take the vaccine. The government is advising the people to also stop believing in all misinformation, pseudo-intellectuals, false beliefs and misconceptions concerning the vaccination. The governor furthermore educates the people that survival will improve if you are vaccinated and caught COVID-19. It will also reduce the need to be hospitalized. At this moment, the entire isolation ward in Port Moresby General Hospital is already in full capacity. Among the other attendees during the press conference were Executive Officer Dr. Albert Newton, City Manager Stephen Yanni, and St. John Ambulance CEO Matt Cannon. The government can only do as much. It's all up to the constituents to do their part. Vaccination centers are everywhere in NCD. COVID-19 is real and it kills. Everyone is encouraged to make a wise decision. Reporting from Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, this is Echo Hortaleza Quinola, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. A cyber attack on Papua New Guinea's finance ministry briefly disrupted government payments and operations. This is according to the officials late Thursday. Ransomware infiltrated and compromised a core server at the Department of Finance last week, hampering the government's access to foreign aid, its ability to pay checks, and carry out other basic functions in the midst of spiraling COVID-19 surge. The department has now managed to fully restore the system. However, because of the risk, we are playing safe by not allowing full usage of affected network, said John Pundari, acting treasurer. Pundari said the department did not pay any ransom to purported hacker or any, any of its third-party agents and that they have managed to restore normalcy. The attack took place in the middle of the night on October 22. The platform controls budgeting and finance for the entire Papua New Guinea government. And the news continues here on ASEAN in Focus. We'll be right back.
Alam namin ang iyong pagsisikap. Dama namin ang iyong mga sakripisyo. Kita namin ang pagharap mo sa bawat pagsubok. Kaya sa kabila ng mga hamon ng buhay, nandito kami para umalalay. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka nang mangamba. Sasamahan ka namin to pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo. Sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon. May lalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa new era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti at tagumpay. Hi, I'm Alex Calier, isang podcaster, YouTuber, writer, director, at isang stand-up comedian for more than 12 years. Ang sarap maging komedyan sa Pilipinas, no? Dahil paborito ng mga Pinoy, pagsaluan ang mga nakakatawang eksena sa paligid. Pero dahil sa pandemic, ang kulitan, naging online na lang. Naranasan mo na ba to? Ginising ka ng nanay mo para tanungin lang kung anong oras ka gigisingin. <laughs> Pero masaya talaga pag sabay-sabay tayong nagtatawanan sa mga videos na gaya nito. <laughs> Ito pa! <laughs> Ito pa! <laughs> At ito pa! <laughs> Kaya naman, heto na ang Funniest Knockable Videos! Ang natatangin show na bubusugin ang buong sambenan sa katatawanan! <laughs> ang bagong tambayan ng buong pamilya at barkada mula lunes ang gabienes nyo kami makakasama tuwing 4.30pm dito lang sa NET25. Dito, mapapanood natin ang best comedy videos na hinanap pa namin sa kasulukan ng internet. So ano bang hinihintay nyo? Join na sa pinakabago at pinakamasayang afternoon habit ng tawanan at kulitan ang funniest snackable videos. Welcome back. The, amid the pandemic, the Iglesia Ni Cristo continues its worldwide aid to humanity in different parts of the world. Here's Crystal Ambalesteros covering the worldwide aid to humanity in Cambodia. Hello, Crystal. Hi, Alma. You are right. Despite the crisis due to, due to the pandemic across the globe, Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ has once again prove its willingness to reach the objective of the global campaign against poverty through the Aid to Humanity outreach program that plays a very significant role in different communities globally. An Aid to Humanity was held in Cambodia in cooperation with Felix Y. Manalo Foundation to deliver essential sources. Brother William Wall Brother William Arcatabona Jr., Minister of the Gospel in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, led the distribution of goodie bags containing rice and non-perishable items. They personally handed to the recipients who are students of online English tutorial that is also sponsored by members of Iglesia Ni Cristo who are teachers in profession. The recipients expressed their gladness and thanks to Iglesia Ni Cristo for the aid that they received and for the free online English tutorials. The members of Iglesia Ni Cristo here in Cambodia continue to unite with the church administration in helping those who are in need. Through the dynamic leadership of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, they are united in helping even other nationalities in any way possible. 
Iglesia ni Cristo members are indeed glad and in being part of this historical campaign against poverty. Through the leadership of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo and ministers, thousands of people across the globe have been benefited and have demonstrated a positive impact in their lives. Back to you, Alma. Thank you very much, Crystal Ann, for your report on the uh, aid for humanity there. And before we go, I'd like to greet you a belated happy birthday. Crystal, how old are you now? <laughs> Thank you, Alma. I'm 25. <laughs> Proud to be. Thank you very much for that report, Crystal. Happy birthday. Thank you. And keep safe there, Arm Alma, reporting live here in Cambodia. I am Crystal Ann Valisteros, and we live in interesting times. The late and happy birthday, Crystal. Now staying in Cambodia, foreign tourists will soon roam Cambodia's ancient Angkor Wat temples once again after officials on Tuesday flagged a partial reopening to vaccinated travelers. The Cambodian Tourism Ministry on Tuesday announced a November 30 reopening for popular beach spots Sihanoukville and the island of Korong, as well as Dara Sakor, a Chinese developed resort zone. The northern city of Siam Reap, gateway to the World Heritage listed Angkor Wat complex, will be added to the kingdom's hotel quarantine free travel scheme in January. Foreign travelers will require certificates showing they have been double vaccinated, health insurance covering treatment for COVID 19, and a negative swab test prior to departure and upon arrival in the country, the tourism ministry said. Tourism must remain a minimum of five days at the pilot locations and undergo a further swab test before being allowed to explore other parts of Cambodia. Cambodia's tourism reboot has taken some inspiration from neighboring Thailand's Phuket Sandbox Hotel Quarantine-Free Travel Scheme, which kicked off in July, attracting more than 56,000 international arrivals to the island. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll be, be, we'll be back with the uh, right uh, videos and pictures on that news. Dito nyo lang unang marinig, breaking news. Talagang uh, napag-isipan ninyo, wag na pong tumakbo. Dinig your Sara, ay tatakbo. I will seriously consider. Pati merong mas maganda pang mechanism para matulungan natin yung ating mga super. Ito yung Pantawid Pasada Program. Ano sa palagay ninyo? Suspindihin muna yung excise tax on fuel? O kawalan naman ng 131.4 billion sa government revenues na pandemic response natin yan sa 2022? Mga isyong siguradong tatapak sa inyong umaga. So, yan, Batter yan. Stories! Sabi nga Kuryente, huwag ka lang mawala ng tubig. Ako ay no? agree. Paano ka maglilinis? Paano ka maliligo? Doon talaga nag-uumisa ang sakin. Sige nga, pakwento nga dito sa talinong ang sinitong COVID-19 na to. Kuda, walang, walang utak yung COVID-19 na yan. Dapat mag-utak tayo. <laughs> <laughs> Gaano karami po ba ang uh, nadagdag sa ating populasyon na tulad ng inaasahan natin? Ito In ay mas mababa kaysa nung 2019. Sila ang source ng pinag-uusapan ngayon, ASPN. Bawal ang bata except for yung essential travel or for work, hindi ba? Maasahan ho ba na ating mga healthcare workers na bago po magtapos ang taon, yung kanilang mga beneficyo po ay maibibigay na po sa kanila. Yung ibang mga official naroon pa rin sila at nakaupo pa rin sa PhilHealth. Have they been administratively charged? May mga kaso na ito. Sa DICT, um, all the LGUs, as long as nagpabakuna ka, dinadang, binibigay nila yung record na yon sa DICT. Ano sa palagay nyo? Kasama si Ali Soto at Pat Pindaza. Ibig sabihin po, ang pamahalaan ay hindi maaring makialam. Oh, oh, oh. Gusto mo parang may emergency intervention. Ang gobyerno pwede humimasok. Talaga bang totoo, isasarado muna ang Dolomite Beach? Yes, sarado na po siya until November 3. So we're trying to look at it. Uh, kung paano naman namin, uh, kakasuhan din, pabalik, tungkos siya na ito. Salamat po sa inyo. 
sa inyong suporta sa PNP at para sa ating mga pulisan. Lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8 hanggang alas 10 na umaga. Simulcast sa Net25. Kasi pag kumuha ka ng ganyan, kumakalembang yung mga dito mo. <laughs> DZEC 1062 Mega Manila, Eagle FM 95.5, Facebook at YouTube. Palagi na lang bang drama sa TV ang napapanood nyo? Gusto na ba ng break sa mga latest news at chika? Pwes eto na ang palabas na tiyak na mabubusog kayo sa kakatawa. Iba't ibang snack ang ihahandog namin sa inyo, gaya ng mga video wacky, witty, funny, at marami pang iba na mapapasakit ang tiyan mo sa tuwa. Lahat ng yan sa Funniest, funniest Snackable video. video. Malapit na malapit funniest namang patawa video. sa Net25. Kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo, mula po rito sa record section ng tanggapang pangkalahatan, kami po ay bumabati sa inyo ng maligayang kaarawan at buong pusong nangangako na kami po ay makikipagkaisa at magpapasakop at handang tumulong sa inyong malawak at mabigat na gampanin alang-alang po sa kapakanan ng buong iglesia. Uli po, kami ay bumabati sa inyo ng maligayang kaarawan. Urihin ang Panginoon Diyos. Mahal na mahal po namin kayo. Events happen around us all the time. In our community, in our country, around the world. Events that affect people, move communities, or simply inspire us. Interesting events that people need to know. In these interesting times, we continue to be a competent partner in delivering news about these events. Fast, accurate, balance. Eagle News, because we live in interesting times. Welcome back. The woman who caused a stir at a luxury retail store for refusing to wear a mask in Malaysia has been fined. Here's Alfred Balmes for an update. Hi, Alma. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, this Alfred. Is, yeah. this, is an, uh, this, this is an update of the Caucasian woman who refused to wear a mask inside the luxury retail store here in Malaysia. The police officer issued that two compound worth 1,500 Malaysian ringgit. A few weeks later, she was seen again at another shopping mall in Bangsar, Kuala Lumpur. According to Dang Wagi OCPD Assistant Commissioner Nor Dilhan Yahaya, after the authorities had completed their investigation, issued two compounds worth 1,500 Malaysian ringgit each to the woman yesterday to breaching COVID-19 standard operating procedure. The first compound was issued for her failure to scan using my, my Sajetra app before entering the premises, and the second was to for failure to wear a face mask. The police also confirmed that the Caucasian woman in the viral video at a regal store in Kuala Lumpur was the same person who tried to enter a Bangsar shopping mall without wearing a mask. Brickfield OCPD Assistant Commissioner Ami Siham Abdul Shukur was quoted as saying the police has identified the woman and opened an investigation into the case. Police detected a 20-second video clip circulating on Twitter of the woman in the Bangsar Mall. He confirmed that she was the same person who had caused a scene at the first retail store in the city. In the video, a maskless Caucasian woman is seen complaining to the shopping mall center staff that the boutique worker had put his hand on her to prevent her from entering, which was denied by the employee concerned. The woman in the video netizens dubbed Karen, the generic, generic name used for a self-entitled white woman, went viral and became a top trending topic on the social media on Wednesday. Back to you, Alma. Thank you. Finally, we saw her, but her picture was uh, blurred. But anyways, thank you for that update, for that interesting update. Thanks, You're Alfred. Welcome. You're welcome. Live reporting from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This is Alfred Balmes. We live in interesting times.
Now let's have some good news. In Thailand, the country will begin accepting international tourists from 63 countries as long as they are fully vaccinated. Let's hear more from Veronica Carino. Hi, Veronica. Good afternoon, Esther, and to all of our viewers. Yes, a total of 63 countries now can enter Thailand without quarantine for fully vaccinated tourists. The government announced that fully vaccinated travelers from 63 countries and territories would be allowed to enter Thailand without quarantine beginning Monday. That is today, November 1st, 2021, provided they test negative for COVID-19 upon arrival. Among the countries named in the announcements were Australia, Austria, Bahrain, Belgium, Bhutan, Brunei, Bulgaria, Cambodia, Canada, Chile, China, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hong Kong, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Japan, Latvia, Lithuania, Malaysia, Malta, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Slovenia, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and United Arab Emirates. The additional 17 countries are India, Taiwan, Laos, Myanmar, the Philippines, Croatia, Indonesia, Kuwait, Maldives, Mongolia, Nepal, Oman, Romania, Slovakia, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and Luxembourg, according to a new announcement signed by Thani Thong Pakdi, the Permanent Secretary for Foreign Affairs. Visitors from other countries who are fully vaccinated will also be allowed to enter, but only through a tourism sandbox program that is currently in place in 17 provinces. They will be quarantined for one week before being allowed to travel to other parts of the country. Tourists who haven't been vaccinated or who haven't been fully vaccinated will now be required to quarantine at a hotel for 10 days. Hotel bookings are increasing, particularly from guests from the 63 countries exempt from quarantine restrictions, indicating the reopening is attracting tourists from around the world, according to Tourism Authority of Thailand or TAT, Governor Yutasa Supasar. I am confident that the reopening will greatly benefit the country, particularly during the tourism high season, which typically lasts until early next year. TAT now anticipates that over 1 million tourists, or approximately 300,000 per month, will visit in the next six months, he stated. According to him, the figures represent about 10% of the totals recorded in 2019. Restaurants are still prohibited from serving alcoholic beverages in areas where maximum controls apply, with the exception of Bangkok, which will only allow restaurants certified by the Safety and Health Administration, or SHA, to serve alcohol until 9 p.m. According to the government spokesman Tanakon Wambung Kongshana, Prime Minister Prayuchan Shah has directed the Ministry of Public Health and the Ministry of Transport to ensure the safety and convenience of the tourists. This update is from Bangkok Post. Back to you, Esther. Seems like we will be accepting visitors now, Veronica. Thank you yes. for your time and for your update. Thank you. And likewise, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand, I am Veronica Carino and we live in interesting times. Now let's go back to Cambodia's reopening for foreign tourists. And the tourists will soon roam Cambodia's ancient Angkor Wat temples once again after officials on Tuesday flagged a partial reopening to vaccinated travelers. The Cambodian Tourism Ministry on Tuesday announced a November 30 reopening for a popular beach spots Sihanoukville and the island of Koh Rong, as well as Dara Sakor, a Chinese developed resort zone. The northern city of Siem Reap Gateway to World Heritage listed Angkor Wat complex will be added to the Kingdom's Hotel Quarantine Free Travel Scheme in January. 
foreign travelers will require certificates showing they have been double vaccinated, health insurance covering treatment for COVID-19, a negative swab test prior to departure and upon arrival in the country, the tourism ministry said. Tourists must remain for for a minimum of five, of five days at the pilot locations and undergo a further swab test before being allowed to explore other parts of Cambodia. Cambodia's tourism reboot has taken some inspiration from neighboring Thailand's Phuket Sandbox Hotel quarantine-free travel scheme, which kicked off in July, attracting more than 56,000 international arrivals to the island. Meanwhile, Thai protesters have rallied in the Bangkok's commercial district, calling for an end to the country's strict lame assess the law after a string of student protest leaders have been charged under the law following the peak of their monarchy reform movement last year. Take a look. <laughs> So we hope that a lot of people will come and sign on the petition and raise awareness as well. So tomorrow we will collect the signature from change.org, also the offline signatures we hand over to Prayuchan Ocha. A youth-led seat protest movement for democracy rose last year and at its peak drew tens of thousands uh, to rallies in Bangkok. The demonstrators called for the resignation of Prayut, a former army chief who came to power in a 2014 coup, as well as changes to the military scripted constitution. But the most shocking calls were for changes to the monarchy, a long revered institution in Thailand, protected by some of the world's toughest lay majestic laws. In other news, the Supreme Court has directed the Sandigan Bayan to proceed with the arraignment of the former mayor of Lapu Lapu City, Cebu, for graft charges arising from street lighting projects in 2016 for the 12th Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN Summit. In a 24-page decision published online on October 27 and written by Associate Justice Ramon Paul Hernando, the Supreme Court dismissed the petition to quash information of Arturo Radaza. His arguments are too trivial to merit the quashal of the information and too vacuous to justify the delay in prosecution of the criminal case, the Supreme Court ruled. Radaza was sued in connection with a contract of 139 sets of street light poles amounting to 72,500 pesos each and another 60 sets worth 85,500 pesos each put up along the Mactan Mandawe Bridge that connects the cities of Mandawe and Lapu Lapu City. Cebu Province was designated as the venue of 12th ASEAN Summit on January 9 to 15, 2017. In 2018, the Office of the Ombudsman for the Visayas received letters of complaints from various organizations alleging irregularities in the contracts. The agency later found prima facie evidence of overpricing resulting from the collusion among the winning bidders, private contractors, and the city governments of Mandawe and Lapu Lapu. Former executives of the Department of Public Works and Highways, Region 7, were sentenced last year to six to eight years imprisonment and perpetually barred from holding government office. Pradaza appealed and questioned, among other things, whether his mere signature on the program of works and detailed estimates sufficiently established probable cause against him. Now, President Joko Widodo called for the acceleration of a global economic recovery that is strong, inclusive, and sustainable at the economic and global health session of the G20 summit. Look. This is in Rome, and according to a statement released by the Presidential Secretariat's Press Bureau in Rome, Mr. Widodo said the G20 needs to serve as a catalyst for the normalization of economic policy since in the last two years the world has carried out 
extraordinary policies in the fiscal, monetary, and finance sectors. Widodo also underscored cooperation in innovation, digital technology, and green technology, and investment for inclusive and sustainable development, as well as global cooperation for the advancement of developing countries at the meeting. He further called for the strengthening of global health architecture. To materialize this vision, he made three suggestions. Namely, first, countries must formulate a mechanism for pooling global health resources, including funding, vaccines, medicines, medical equipment, and medical workers that can readily be deployed to countries in need, he said. Secondly, Widodo called upon all leaders at the summit to establish a standard for health protocols with regard to activities between countries, including travel health protocols. And last, he believed that the G20 needs to be a part of the solution for reducing gaps and scarcity in the availability of vaccines, medicines, and essential medical equipment. To Vietnam now, where Bamboo Airways on Sunday announced non-stop air routes to the UK with APG being the airline's representative in the UK. According to government website VGP News, the announcement was witnessed by Prime Minister pra Pam Min Chin, who has arrived in Scotland for the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, or COP26. As scheduled starting from January 2022, Bamboo Airways will launch six returned non-stop flights weekly connecting Vietnamese cities of Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City with British capital London. Practically, direct flights will help shorten the travel time between Vietnam and the UK to 12 to 13 hours or 7 hours shorter than the transit ones. The routes will also open up chances to increase flights between Vietnam and other global destinations. Opening direct flights between Vietnam and the UK would contribute to, to commerce and people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries, according to Nguyen Huang Long, Vietnamese ambassador to the UK. And through its humanitarian arm, the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation, the Iglesia de Cristo for Church of Christ, conducts aid to humanity events in different parts of the world. In Thailand, here's Crystal Mabak covering the event, the worldwide aid to event there. Here's Crystal. Members of Iglesia de Cristo here in Thailand join the simultaneous worldwide aid to humanity here in Benguito Municipality, Patumtani, Thailand, in cooperation with Felix Y. Manalo Foundation. Patumtani Province is 35 kilometers north of Bangkok, Thailand's capital city. The Felix Y. Manalo Foundation office is located here, in which the items for donation were prepared days ahead of this event. This distance didn't hinder the members of Iglesia and Cristo from different parts of Metro Bangkok to extend help and even those from provinces outside Bangkok traveled early in the said venue. Health protocols are followed by attendees for the safety of the event. The recipients of the aid will receive non-perishable items such as sacks of rice, instant noodles, gallons of alcohol, canned goods, and toiletries. Members of Iglesia de Cristo enthusiastically show their unity from preparations such as repacking of goods to transporting in the venue for which they believe this worldwide event could elevate the burden of the pandemic to the recipients. Beneficiaries of this aid to humanity are members of the local community who are affected by the impact of COVID-19. The donations are formally accepted by Bongayita's Mayor Rang Nankawong, who expressed their gratitude in a briefing attended by ministers and evangelical workers in Thailand, led by the District Minister, Brother Willen Di Regalado. ให้ความยินดีใจให้ความยินดีใจ
ติดอยู่นะครับเรื่องนี้ความสัมพันธ์ที่ระหว่างผู้หลอกนะก็คิดว่าความรู้สึกนี้ไม่มีทางไหนไปกับคนไทยเราชาวไทยแล้วก็คนไทยโดยสุขทุกท่านนะครับโดยเฉพาะท่านประธานเอกโคโดมีความยินดีมากค่ะยินดีมากที่ทางฟิลิปปินส์นะคะได้นําของมาบริจาคนะคะสิ่งของมากมายอันนี้จะทําให้เอาเป็นประโยชน์กับผู้เดือดร้อนนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นผู้ยากไร้นะคะหรือว่าอาจจะมีผู้ป่วยน้ําท่วมอย่างเงี้ยค่ะก็จะขาดแคลนอาหารเนาะเราก็จะนําไปมอบต่อนะคะการให้แบบนี้นะคะก็เป็นการแบ่งปันที่ดีดีมากๆเลยนะคะแล้วก็โลกเราก็จะได้น่าอยู่นะคะสำหรับมีผู้แบ่งปันนะคะประ,ประเทศเราโลกเราก็จะได้มีทั้งคือคนมีมีกินคนรวยเนี่ยก็จะนำอาหารต่างๆมาแบ่งปันให้กับคนที่ยากไร้คนไม่มีตังค์นะคะก็จะทำให้โลกเราสวยงามนะคะแล้วอยู่ร่วมกันได้อย่างมีความสุขนะคะขอบคุณค่ะคุณค่ะ The Church of Christ in every part of the world regularly holds activities like this in fulfillment of God's commandment to love our fellow men and help those who are in need. That will always be our purpose in this kind of events. As in every other activities of the Church, brethren have prepared in advance so we can conduct the event in an efficient way. In orderly manner, a very important part of our preparation is to seek God's help and guidance through our devotional prayers held one week before the activity. As members of the Church of Christ, we are always joyful when we fulfill the commandments of our Almighty God, and we saw this in the faces of the brethren who participated in this event. They may be tired, but full of happiness. To our beloved Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo Di Manalo, we thank you so much for, for allowing us to conduct this activity in our district. We promise to always be united with you in all the activities of the Church in honor of our own right here. Our beloved Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo Di Manalo, we would like to greet you. Happy birthday, Bo! We love you so much, Bo! What we've seen today is a proof that wherever members of Iglesia Ni Cristo are, they are united in any endeavor launched by the church administration through the dynamic leadership of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Even though they also feel the impact of the pandemic, they join this worldwide activity with smiles in their faces and with high hopes of spreading positivity, love, and care unconditionally. From Thailand, Crystal Mapa, We live in interesting times. Thank you very much, Crystal, for that uh, news. Very good news, positive news on the World Wide Day for you. Yes, Alma, we were there. And it was really nice seeing Filipinos and Thai people having a friendship. And they are actually looking forward for more projects <laughs> and more activities from from the Aid to Humanity or the Felix, Wey Felix Weymanau Foundation. Mm -hmm. And a very happy birthday again to our uh, Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Happy, happy birthday po again. Happy birthday po, Ka Eduardo. We love you so much po. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nations. Thank you for joining us today in ASEAN in Focus. I'm Master Odanga from EBC Thailand Bureau and we live in interesting times. And a special shout out to uh, a brother, Waylon Regalado, who's watching us right now. Hello, po, and thank you for your support, as always. And I'm Alma Angeles. We'll see you back tomorrow, same time, same place. We live in interesting, in interesting times. Mm -hmm.